Welcome back, pilots. Have a replay today from Seahawks Fan 3532. First time being on the channel. And uh, we're flying the IL 20 today. Now, as you can tell from the markings, Seahawk has been playing the <laughs> IL 20 for a while now, much longer than I have. Um, so I don't really have any specific advice here, but I think this is a good learning video tutorial for those who are playing uh, who want to uh, maybe do a little better in it. Um, and. Um, you know, just kind of learn the ropes a little bit and uh, also see, interestingly enough, uh, Seahawk and Hunter beat a F-29C and an FJ-1. So they're down tiered as a pair. Um, and then also they're facing off against a B-29C and a very good pilot in the B-29C. So um, tough matchup to be sure. So uh, first thing I noticed was the judicious use of ordnance, <laughs> right? Um, trying to rely mainly on these big wing guns uh, to do a bulk of the damage. The L-20 is sort of a hybrid between the German and Soviet lines in this way, right? And that you do have um, nice, solid guns to work against your ground targets. I believe also this is the speed paint on it, uh, increasing your cruise speed by 3%. That's also a big thing because this is very slow, as you can tell here, even boosting. You know, we're at 420 or so. And you do only have 30 seconds of boost, so it's not like some of the bombers where you've got a lot. And I think you should also take note of this. Um, Hunter and Seahawk have avoided the airfield. Um, they have not gone there to begin with, right? So um, they're kind of seeding that for now. They want to gather these uh, perimeter territories and then go from there. And there's a specific strategy behind that. One, the fj ones a turn fighter, and so it can dominate the airfield if it wants to. Um, and two, uh, the B-29 is not super fast, um, and it started up top. So the best play for it is to go to its own command center and then head here to this rocket base. So in a sense, Hunter and Seahawk are mirroring the path of that B-29 and seeding the airfield for now because they are betting that between the two of them, they can counter cap this area. And you can see there the B-29 above them, right? Because if they can counter cap this area, if they can steal it out from under the B-29, then their next move is to go take the command center. The B-29 has to either loiter here or transition here, both of which will cost it time to cap because it is also slow. So as is often the case, and you can see they've successfully done that here, as is often the case in World of Warplanes, uh, the real um, goal is efficiency and they have become more efficient than the B-29. Um, and you can see that, you know, fortunately for them, the, the airfield is flipped despite the FJ-1 being there, uh, which is pretty incredible. I don't know if he went down or not. I was not watching the kill feed. It looks like there is a diamond over there, so he might be at the airfield somewhere. Um, but that is uh, sometimes the nature of bots as well. But and the airfield, which can be a wild melee. And in this case, bonus. But even if uh, they had captured the airfield, um, they would still have the edge in this fight because of the strategy that they've adopted. One thing I did note is the rocket fire off here. And I, I saw it again later. So I'm not sure if Seahawk was firing off to reload. If so, just a reminder for any pilots, uh, you can hit V and it will do force a reload on your um, halfway used ordnance down there. Um, but it may not be, maybe that's not the case if you've still got a couple of rockets, but all your bombs, I don't know, I haven't played with it that much, um, but generally speaking, that's a way to do it. If this was a firing off of the rockets as a shot at the Mi-329 coming in, these rockets have about a thousand meter range, so those were not going to uh, reach the Mi-329 before they auto detonated. Hunter's looking uh, half dead there. Looks like he's going to clean up the 329. And Seahawk is going to go ahead and head this way. Now, the nice thing is, because of what they've done here, the rocket base is going to start attacking the command center, giving them a little bit of an edge moving into this, right? And their bombers are also headed that way. And this is wonderful. I think the 329 was able to respawn. So they've really kind of put their foot on the gas here. And despite the fact that they're not super fast, right? Uh, the IL-20 is not super fast. As a team, they put their foot on the gas, right? Just pushing forward quickly and efficiently dealing with this. And should something go down here, like that you see right there, uh, we had a plane go down and the um, capture points changed a little bit. Um, the uh, nice thing is you've got the rockets coming in, destroying targets, but you also have that bomber flight from the command center coming in. Meanwhile, by the way, if you're looking at the map, 
you can see that the uh, B29 has had to move on to the other command center down here and is just now reaching that territory and dropping bombs. Um, and so that's that's where that edge has come from, right? And again, just an impressive use of you know efficiency in the ordnance use as well. Um, we're going to stick to those guns. We're going to save the ordnance for if we need it, right? Because the reload is long and can be difficult. Uh, we're going to do what we can. Now, uh, the um, actually, I apologize when I'm looking at the map here. I got confused. So the B-29 stayed over the rocket base and decided to cap it. In fact, you can see it in the distance right there. It's a little bit of a dot in the middle. Uh, so stayed there and has just now flipped the rocket base and now is moving to the command center. In the meantime, though, we've got a command center, right, that's been launched. And here's the other thing. Most of the bots, as they spawn, are either going to come here or to the airfield, one of the two. And so it's going to be relatively easy to take this as sort of the second, um, second wave of sectors beyond the spawn zone of red, right? So it's going to take the bots a while to get there. We'll see what happens, um, but you can also see the uh, flight over there is dropping bombs on that, which is also inefficient because that flight is dropping bombs, there's only two of them left, and the B-29 has to head that way, so it's not like they're capping two zones at once, right? Uh, they, are, they do have the um, rocket base kind of attacking the airfield here, um, but you can see that Vampire has just shot down Sky Ranger Rick. Uh, so that Vampire cleaning up the FJ-1, and that will preserve the airfield for a little while. Um, because if you've got those points coming out, right, then that means it's harder for this rocket base to work in. And you can see here again, judicious use of ordnance, right? We're working on this primary zone, uh, the central zone that uh, gives us so many cap points, right? That was 80. You're able to get, get in there and really do a number of the points, about half of what you need in the sector. And then easy peasy, we come over here, fire another rocket through those last 20 points and we're back and that's supremacy, right? And if you look on your map, I don't even see where uh, the B-29 is. I assume it's over that way somewhere um, off the side of the map. Unfortunately, the replay is bugged. Uh, so I don't have a way of seeing that. I don't think I can. Let's see if we can get the, um... there we go. Yeah, the B-29 is up there. I'm looking at the mini map in the bottom corner. B-29 is up there being chased by three or four aircraft um, and um, was not able to flip the zone yet. Firing off of the rockets again just so we can get a, a reload going on them. And at this point, the question is where to head. And um, I think if you are in this situation, uh, the place you want to head is where you can do the most good. And that is, in this case, if they lose the airfield, which they are closest to losing at this point, uh, I would head that way. But you do have both of these kind of options in here, right? So we're just kind of threading a needle, I think, between them um, in case there is a flip. The FJ-1 is back attacking the airfield. You know, the B-29 is over here, although it looks like the B-29 either just went down. Yeah, it just went down. So uh, that is going to pretty much be the game at this point, right? Um, although the B-29 may have already gone down and be back over that uh, command center. And you can see um, Hunter is over there kind of counter capping it. Again, the airfield is hard to defend, uh, and so you know, sometimes you just want to move and, and make things difficult elsewhere. Seahawk sees that, that the base is about to flip, so she's going to edge her way that way and make a run on it. It's not going to matter. We're too close to the finish line at this point. You have 25 points left to go and nine points coming in every five seconds, so this game has you know, 20 seconds to go. So, um, But a really solid, efficient run there, right? And the interesting part for me is what would have happened if this airfield had been flipped sooner? This probably would have been a longer and more difficult match. Um, and so, But uh, I think they probably still would have pulled it out. Um, you would have had some of the planes spawning here. And so a faster attack pattern happening on uh, these two, the rocket base and this command center. Uh, but it, it really was a good strategy. And, you know, that's one of the things I, I think of, too. I, I was in a game last night with um, a pair of... Um, was actually, oddly enough, um, two multi-rolls on each side. And the two multi-rolls on the enemy team went directly to the center zone, it was a five-sector map, and tried to cap it. My teammate and I worked the edges, and so when the dust settled, we had four zones and they had one. Um, and then it was an uphill climb, right, trying to do that. Sometimes the center zone is not as important as we make it out to be, even if it is a rocket base or an airfield. Um, sometimes it's better to work the edges, particularly if you're not certain of the matchup, right? 
In this case, if we had done that standard thing, if we had kind of captured the command center and then headed to the airfield, it's dicey if we would have gotten the airfield or not. And the B-29 would have captured the command center and the rocket base um, before we would have encountered them, right? Um, and so staying ahead of that kind of curve um, and forcing the B-29 to play to its lone weakness, the only weakness it has, it's its lack of speed, um, is really helpful if you go up against them in a battle like this. They're also fortunate, however, that it wasn't a mine, uh, mining plant map or something like that. It really was a good matchup for them in that sense, but they played it very well. And I thought that was worth pointing out and encouraging others to do as well. So you got four sectors captured, as you see here. That's excellent. Capping sectors is how you win games for the most part. Um, and especially if you are in a ground attack or a bomber, that's a big deal. 47 sections of ground targets destroyed, 325 capture points. Uh, that sounds crazy. You'd think that would get you more than a grade three, right? Um, you'd think that would be a much, especially with the number of sectors captured there. But uh, unfortunately, no. So solid game by both of them. You can see from the scores they did well. And Heindergrinder did well too. It just wasn't fast enough, right? Um, and that's sometimes frustrating part of this game is if you play well, um, but you have something go wrong or a teammate's not quite as, um, as up to snuff, uh, then it can be frustrating. But if you do what you are supposed to and you work efficiently uh, on the map, a lot of times good things happen. So thanks to Seahawk for sending in the replay. Um, note, uh, again, some of those lessons in there, efficient use of ordnance, leaning on your guns when you can. You know, really taking out that center target quickly um, with the ordinance that you have uh, to get a big chunk of capture points. And then just knowing the map, knowing the zones, and attacking them in a way that is beneficial for your team. So all excellent stuff. Hope you guys have a great weekend. I am out of town again, so most likely there will not be a video up until the beginning of next week. But I hope you have a good time. Uh, if you get a chance, check out the website. We do have an update that came in and the announcement of a new Tier 7 Premium Heavy Fighter, an Italian one. And so we're looking forward to hearing more about that from Wargaming and how we might obtain it. And of course, the B-29 itself is on sale right now with some brand new camouflage uh, based on the assembly ships of World War II. So if that is uh, something you want to do, um, it is certainly available at this time for you to grab. So um, until the next time, I hope you have good luck and good hunting in World of Warplanes.